Hey there, Commanders. Today we take another step up in the Zero Orion ship build series with the Millsaw, a Crate Mark II build with no engineering, no reputation, and no tech broker parts. The only limiting factor here is your credit balance. The Crate is a top performer among AX ships, well known and appreciated for its versatility. The Crate's meaty core internals are strong enough to drive just about anything after engineering meaning that a refit of the crate is often accomplished with little more than a hardpoint swap. It's an ideal haul for commanders who only want a single AX ship in their fleet. There are a few downsides to consider, expense being the first and potentially largest. Fully engineered, shielded, and tech broker integrated builds can run about 500 million credits, a metric that some within the AX community believe to be the minimum starting point for AX combat. I disagree. So long as you understand the weaknesses and limitations of your build, it's possible to get by with a lot less than the current metas imply. For core internals, the armor package will be military-grade composite, the AXI standard recommendation for everything Thargoid. Military composites offer the same hull boost as mirrored or reactive armor, but at a fraction of the cost. Since Thargoid weapons deal absolute damage, we don't really care about resistance augmentations offered by the other armor options. The power plant will be size 7A, though for this build, commanders on a budget can substitute a size 7B power plant. It's possible to go even smaller if needed, but I advise keeping the power plant at its spec size so that future upgrades are easier to apply. Be sure to swap in the A-rated reactor before beginning to engineer. Thrusters will be size 6A. B-rated thrusters are also possible here, though speed is your best friend when it comes to fighting Thargoids, so I recommend going straight for the A module if at all possible. Without engineering, the best you can hope for is the high 300 meters per second range, which is just barely fast enough to evade caustic missiles. The frameshift drive is recommended size 5A, though B-rated units are adequate on a budget. With a size 5 drive bay, the crate can take advantage of a tech broker frameshift drive when the time comes to upgrade. Don't bother with engineers unless you want a shielded drive. The crate has a small, recessed cockpit canopy that is harder to hit and grants it a certain level of forgiveness when it comes to canopy failure. However, Thargoid interceptors have near-perfect aimbot, so when shots do connect, things will get drafty very quick. Because of this, I recommend A-rated life support though you are able to get away with B-rated kit for longer on this hull. The crate's power distributor is a unique strength, and one only three other medium ships take advantage of. Without any engineering required, a 7A distributor provides incredible power headroom, with hardly any combat pip management required for this build. You will have perma boost out of the box, paired to a hull with one of the most efficient boost profiles in the game though it is remarkably weak compared to ships like the Chieftain. Get comfortable with the phrase boost spam, because you will be constantly doing so under typical combat encounters. Sensors are rated 6A, offering the maximum range available without engineering. Since the crate is pretty slow without drive tuning, it's a good idea to lean into situational awareness. Once engineered, it's possible to go for a D-rated sensor package and be okay though I would only do this if power constrained for some reason. The 5C fuel tank is left unmodified. Optional internals will follow a cold orbit model. We're just on the edge of being fast enough for this to work, and it makes both power and distributor management easier. Interested commanders can add a shield generator to any size 6 optional bay, but without extra utilities for shield boosters, it's hard to keep it up in a sustained engagement. Also remember that shields will draw from your system's capacitor, and will need to be carefully managed to ensure that your shutdown field neutralizer is ready to fire when needed. You can see the layout which I've opted for. Note the module reinforcement in the size 5 and size 3 bays. As with previous builds, feel free to play with the module and hull protection ratios as you see fit. One size 3 bay is reserved for an experimental weapon stabilizer allowing for all weapon hardpoints to deal AX damage. This can be removed if you want to run flak against Thargon swarms, though for this ship, I prefer to ignore the Thargons as much as possible. Since it's only fast in a straight line, and lacks the maneuverability to handle Thargons very well. 
The size 1 optional has an advanced docking computer for comfort, but this can be replaced with basically anything you want. The weapons package will be divided based on hardpoint size. The size 3 hardpoints will receive a gimbaled enhanced multi-cannon, while the size 2 hardpoints will receive a fixed enhanced AX missile rack. This combination pairs effective exertion damage with an aggressive precision damage profile that helps accelerate the pace of combat with interceptors. It's possible to sub in flak launchers, additional multi-cannons, or laser weapons if desired, but I find this combination to be well balanced and approachable, and recommend it for both new and intermediate players. Utility mounts will be my standard recommendation for ships with four available slots. An enhanced Xeno scanner is critical when using enhanced multi cannons, as it feeds sub target data to the hardpoints for precision damage against exposed Thargoid hearts. A shutdown field neutralizer is likewise critical, especially in port defense operations where you will be exposed to multiple pulses over the course of battle. Two heat sink launchers provide overheat mitigation and stealth capability during cold orbit maneuvers. Flight handling is more constrained than something like a chieftain. The crate is slower to respond when cornering its speeds, and is very dependent on its boost function for basically all AX maneuvering. In exchange for less snappy handling, the crate bears down with big damage, an attribute that keeps it in the S tier for AX operations. This build is devastating against scouts in individual engagement, though its larger cross-section, slower speeds, and lazy handling characteristics make it vulnerable to larger swarms of hostile ships. Thankfully, the crate is just fast enough to outrun caustic missiles, though keeping that momentum all but requires the flight assist system to be turned off. Here, the crate demonstrates one of its strange advantage characteristics. It's more than happy to face off Vector when paired with the boost button. The ship gains a lot of maneuverability that it's apparently been hiding somewhere. This maneuvering increase is a bit deceptive, since actual changes to Vector are extremely slow to follow the nose, especially at higher speeds. It can take two full boost cycles to get everything moving in the right direction. Commanders who choose this ship need to be careful when committing to attack runs on interceptors, since it takes a long time to get out of a maneuver once things get going. The hull does have enough endurance to withstand a few mistakes, but find yourself assaulted from too many directions at once, and options for an exit get pigeonholed very quickly. As with other zero grind ship builds, you must bear in mind that you are not much stronger than the NPC ships and you need to work with them. Don't ignore what they are doing, and help them out wherever you can. Every fight is better with friends, and while NPCs can be very brain dead at times, they are still armed and still capable of drawing fire. Be careful about being alone and try to drag interceptors into clusters of allies for extra help. Total buy-in price as listed is 173 million, making this ship best for intermediate players who are just getting started on their engineering grind. With an 8.64 million credit rebuy, you will want to make sure you are dropping multiple interceptors and scouts between insurance claims. This puts more pressure on you as the pilot to fly right, since we are now teasing the edge of pain when it comes to ship loss. Power management is forgiving on this build, but still important. Here again, I have a build with open space power management in mind. If you are planning to fight around planetary surfaces, or very close to orbital structures, it may be a good idea to set thrusters to priority one. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.